Hey, welcome to Yard of Code. My name is Martijn. And uh, I was thinking what I could do next for a video, and then I realized that tomorrow is the 4th of July, which is the national holiday of all of you Americans out there. And um, I thought, why not try to make an American flag, which uh, you see behind me here. And um, it's not as easy as many of the other flags out there, so I thought it could make a good video. So, if that interests you, stick around. All right, so we have this over here. Let's click new shader over here. This is on Shader Toy. So, uh, by the way, if you're new to Shader Toy, Shader Toy is a website uh, that allows you to make shaders, which are little programs to make cool looking graphics like you see over here. Um, you could just go to shadertoy.com and uh, follow right along. So, um, so that would be cool. Um, all right, so I'm going to click over here, click on new and then leave. And now we have a brand new shader. Um, all right, so let's do some cleanup. Let's get rid of that and this and this. And then over here, let's start with the black screen. So like three, zero. And um, so we're going to make the American flag. Whenever you're trying to make something or copy something, it's always a good idea to look at some reference. And so I downloaded an image and put it in Photoshop. So here is the American flag. So we can learn something about it. For those of you, including myself, that weren't too familiar with it. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to work on the background here, this red and white stripes, these red and white stripes. Uh, and so for that, I'm going to go over here. Uh, also, I'm going to define some colors. I'm going to say vec3 white equals vec3 uh, that. That makes a white color. So now if I go over here and I say white, it's going to make a white background. And I'm going to do the same thing with the red. So, I, uh, well, actually, I can just go over here. Vec3 red equals Vec3. And I could just, uh, you know, do that and pick a pick a red color. Uh, but it's better to to sample it out of, uh, out of the picture so we have the exact red color. Uh, so I'm going to go back to Photoshop and I'm going to go over here uh, to... Uh, where's my eyedropper? Uh, okay, right there. Uh, and then I'm going to click on the red color here. And then over here, I can click and I can see the RGB values here, the red, green, and the blue values. So it's 178, 34, 52. Uh, so I'm going to go back here, do 178, uh, 38, and 52. Did I get that right? Did I flood that already? Uh, 178, 34. 178, 34, 52. And uh, one thing to, to realize is that in Photoshop, often these RGB values are given in a range from 0 to 255, 255. Inside of shaders, the colors are all in a range from 0 to 1. So we have to divide it by 255 in order to get it in the right range. And so now here we could also say, red to get the, the exact same red color. All right, so now we want some <clears throat> some bands, right? Some alternating red, white bands. And uh, the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to use a sine wave for that. Um, so if we just go to Desmos, which is another great tool that you can use, uh, I would open another tab here. If you'll click on that, desmos.com. Um, it's also free and it's a great tool to figure things out. Um, so my UV coordinates, so like what I get as an input here, my UV coordinates that are different for each pixel, they, they start at zero, zero in this corner and they go all the way to one comma one over here. So both for the X and for the Y, so the X goes from zero to one like this and the Y goes from zero to one like that. And so we're going to use the Y coordinate to put that into a sine function to make those bands. And so it goes from zero to one. 
And so over here, if I say sine like this, and then I get a sine wave. And sine waves, uh, they have a period of 2 pi, right? It starts here and then it repeats at 2 pi over here. Um, but we want it to be in the range of from 0 to 1. Um, so what I can do is I can just multiply this by pi. And so now we already have half of a, half of a, a wave like exactly between 0 and 1. And, and now we can multiply this by a larger number to, to kind of see where, where we get. And, and we're only looking at this between 0 and 1. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to say 0, x, and 1. And so now we're, we, um, everywhere that the sine wave is above 0, we're going to make it red. Everywhere it's below 0, we're going to make it white. And so let's count how many bands we have. So we have, let, let's just count the red bands. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. So what we need to do is over here, we need to make sure that we have 7 of these. So now we have 4. Um, so now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, six and a half, seven. Okay, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, which is exactly what we want. All right, so so this is our formula here: x times pi times thirteen. Uh, so what I can do over here is, in order to make alternating red and white, I can use a mix function, and I can say mix red and white uh, with the sine of um, uh, of the uv dot y, which is the y component of the uv that goes from 0 to 1, and then times, uh, what did I do, times 13, times pi times 13, okay, so times pi, so pi would be approximately 1 point, or 3.1415 times 13, and now we have a bunch of red and white stripes. Obviously, this is not exactly what we want. Um, and that's because uh, what we would really want is something that like shoots to one and then shoots to not minus one, but to zero, because this mix function takes a value between one and zero and not between one and minus one. Um, and so to do, to do that, I'm just going to cut this out here, control X, and call this stripes. And then over here, I'm going to say float stripes stripes equals uh, that. Uh, but now I'm going to turn this from a sine wave that goes from plus one to minus one to, to a square wave that goes from one to zero. And the way to do that is to use a smooth step. So smooth step function. And the smooth step function is a very handy function. It's used a lot to remap numbers. I made a video specifically about smooth steps. So if you don't know how it works or, or you want to know how it works, then go check that out in the description below. Um, and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say minus some small number, 0 0.01 and plus some small number. And uh, let's see what that looks like. And so that gives me stripes like that. Now I put in some magic numbers here. Generally that's not 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 the best idea to put to hard code magic numbers like this uh, because this is not resolution independent. Uh, so meaning that if you would zoom in really far here then you this would start getting blurry like the the, um, uh, the border between two colors would start getting blurry and so if you want it resolution independent then it's better to to make a variable call it w, so it's float w equals, uh, and then I would say we could try uh, the f width of uv dot y, and f width is just basically, um, it tells you the difference, the derivative of like of this, uh, of this value from one pixel to the next pixel. Um, so that doesn't really seem to change, but but it makes it that it is a one pixel thick transition at, at every resolution that you're at. All right, so that is the stripes. So that is fairly straightforward. Uh, now let's try to work on the stars. So the stars is a little bit more complicated. So let me, let me just uh, 
go back to a black screen. So call times equals zero. That's a black screen. And then for the star, um, we're going to make the UV coordinate. So the UV coordinates up till now were from zero, zero in the corner over here to one, one over there. Uh, for this, I'm going to make slightly different UV coordinates so that the origin is in the middle and also so that it's uh, corrected for the fact that this viewport is not square. Uh, because right now, both the X and the Y go from 0 to 1 in the X and the Y direction, which means that if you would just paste an image on this, the image would be stretched because, because the viewport is not square. Um, so I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go... I'm going to make a new UV coordinate uh, that has the origin in the middle, and I do that by subtracting half of the resolution from my frag coordinate, and then I'm just going to divide it by Y, and that makes uh, a UV coordinate that has its origin in the middle, and everything that's pasted on here is going to be um, is not going to be squashed. All right, so let's have a look at these stars. So let me just go back over here. Uh, so if we look over here, then we could see that um, these stars are like five-pointed stars, right? They're, they're kind of like, um, they have pentagon, pentagonal symmetry. Uh, so let's look at this big over here. Let me just get rid of my previous drawing. Uh, okay, so I just I just drew this drew this out so you can see uh, what it looks like and the fact that there's a pentagon inside of here. Um, the first thing to realize with this star is that it is symmetrical, right, around the um, uh, around this axis over here. So we can concern ourselves with only drawing half of this star, and then we can just mirror the other half so that we get that for free, basically. Um, and so in order to draw this, what I'm going to do is, let me just pick another color here. Let's say green. Uh, we are going to, basically, I, I'm i going to draw two shapes. And the first shape I'm going to draw is from here to here, I'm going to draw a line. And then from here to here, I'm going to draw a line. And so then I get this this area here, that is my first shape, and the second shape would be this line and this line. Okay, and then if I overlay them on top of each other and then I mirror it, then I have a whole star. Um, so now, uh, first to draw a line, um, we can use a, a dot product. And so let me go back, go back here. Uh, let's see, yeah, we go back here and let's play around with that a little bit. So uh, I could say uh, the dot product of the UV coordinate and the UV coordinate is just which pixel we're at, right? And um, like, and that you could see that as a vector from the origin, right? So if we have a pixel over here, then the, then then this UV would be a vector from from the origin to that pixel. Um, and some, um, so I'll take the dot product with this and some other vector, right? A, a unit vector. And so like one unit vector that we could do is we could start with this straight line over here, right? And that straight line, uh, that like the, the, the normal of that line would, would just be this, this vector over here. And that would be, well, actually, I should probably maybe draw it from, from the origin. Okay, so like over here, so the, the normal would be uh, 0, 1, right? So 0 in, in x, y, or sorry, 0 from left to right, and 1, and one up. Um, and so let's, let's do that. So we can do 0 and 1, dot product of 0 and 1. Um, and then that just gives us a gradient, so plus equals d. We can, have, we can visualize that. Um, okay, here I have to say dot x, y. Okay, that gives us a gradient that has zero in the middle, it's negative on the bottom, and then so it goes from negative to zero to positive. And then we could use that to to cut out a, a line, right? So I, um, I could do similar to what I did before, I could do minus w and w, and that gives us 
an edge like that. Um, and um, and yeah, so what this dot product really does is the, the dot product is the same as this, right? So it's uv dot x times times the first component over here, so times zero plus uv dot y times one, basically, right? That's the same thing. And in this case, it, you can see, well, something, uh, something times zero, that's just zero, so we could just take that out. And something times one is just that something. So this is the same as, as uv dot y. Uh, like a bunch of stuff falls out of the equation in, the, in this case, just because it's a straight line. Um, so the straight line is simple, but what about the other lines, right? So, so obviously this line is simple, but what about this line? Well, well anyways, the line that I drew, that just drew over here. Well, that line is um, basically, it's one of the sides of the pentagon, right? So it's basically this line right here, that vector basically. And, and then the next one will be that one, right? And then on the other side as well. And, and it takes five in total to do a full revolution. So um, we can use a sine and a cosine to, to rotate that unit vector all the way around the clock, basically. Um, and then this would be zero degrees. And then this would be, like this one would be, the full revolution divided by five, right? Because there's five steps in a full revolution. And this would be two times that, and three times that, and four times that, and five times that. Um, and so let's try to do that. Um, so obviously this one would be like super simple. The straight one would, would just be this one. Uh, but the other ones are the sine and the cosine of some angle, right? So the sine and the cosine of some angle, right? And if the angle is zero, then obviously it would be exactly the same. But if I move this angle, then now I can rotate this thing. Okay, now the question is how much do I need to rotate it? Well, a full revolution all the way around is two pi. It's two pi radians. And, and just to show you that, so zero is this. Uh, pi would be uh, 180 degrees, right? So pi would be like exactly the opposite. So now white is on the bottom. And two pi uh, would, it's a, it's approximately 6.2832 is a full re revolution, which is the same as no rotation at all. Um, so, but we want uh, we want to step to the next side of the pentagon, which would be one fifth of a full revolution, which would be that, right? So that would be uh, equivalent to 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 this to this line, right? To this line. Um, all right. So that is that line, and then the second line. Uh, let's see if we can get that too. Uh, back here <clears throat> okay so that's our first line so let's call this d1 just uh, just for shits and giggles d1 um, and let's make d2 which is the second line so d2 so d2 would be um, <clears throat> I think it is three times this oh well, yeah let's just see what this looks like two times Let's do it with D2. Okay, so that's that one, but that one is part of the other shape, right? Because we said in the beginning uh, that we're gonna do it in two shapes. The first shape is this shape, and the second one is this shape, right? And so this line is from, from, from the second shape. So we don't want this one, we want this one right now. Uh, so that is not two times that, it is three times that. Okay, so that is that. Um, and um, and yeah, so like don't forget that these like these are like I'm I'm making a sharp transition right now, but these are um, these are still just distances, right? So if I look at them by themselves, then you see that like it's still just a gradient, right? It, it goes from negative over here all the way to zero, and then all the way positive, but like in this direction. And the same thing for this d one, right? But it's just in a different direction. Um, and now we can we can play around with this. We can take the maximum of, of d1 and d2, d2. So that just takes the largest value of of those two. And now that gives me something like this. And if I multiply that by 10, and you can see that now I have this um, this angle, 
which is the same angle as this as this point over here. Um, it's just that my lines right now, like the, these edges that I made, like right right now they're cutting through the origin. So this one cuts through the origin, and and this one also cuts through the origin, like uh, like that, right? Um, so um, so we're gonna have to move those away from the origin. Um, and in order to do that, that is simple enough because you can just subtract. You could just subtract some value from this to move that. To move that away. Uh, well, I took the I took I took the multiplication out, but yeah. like this. See, I can I can move it like this, right? Um, all right. So um, so now if we use this and we put this in a smooth step to 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 cut out a hard edge, then we get something like that. Right? And uh, like in order to get the point that we wanted, we could just swap these around, and then we have that point. Uh, and now, um, and now we would have to move it by a little bit in order to in order to move it away from the origin, because we're going to mirror it after this. Right. So uh, so now that we have that point, let like watch watch what happens if I mirror this whole thing now. So I say ue dot x equals the absolute of ue dot x. And that just makes it that all, all pixels for which the UV was negative because it was left of the center, let's say it was at negative 0.2, well, the absolute makes that into 0.2, right? So, so, so in, in essence, you're folding, you're folding the screen like this. So now I have a little dart like that, which is exactly what I want. Uh, and I can change the size. So I could say over here, I could call this size, and then over here I could say float size equals 0.1, let's say. Okay, and I can make it larger and smaller as I want. Okay, so that is the first shape. Now the second shape, let's do the second shape. Uh, so uh, we're gonna have a float D3, which is, um, which is the straight line. Yeah, let me just, Get rid of this and start drawing again. So, so now we're working on that line. So that would be D3. Uh, like over here. So D3 <coughs> was just uv dot y. Okay. Or if you want, it's the dot product of the uv and a vector that is like this. Right. That's the same thing. Um, and then uh, D4 uh, would be, yeah, let me just copy this. And so D4, D4 uh, was the two times the step. Okay, so that's D4. Um, so let me see what this looks like. Let me just copy this between D4 and, or D3 and D4, so D3 and D4, okay, and that gives me that shape now, okay, which is exactly the shape we wanted, right, it's, it's just exactly this shape, like that, um, okay, all right, so we have D3 and D4, yeah, and then for D3, I'm just going to say here, uv dot y, it's going to keep it simple and clean and sh short, Okay, so now we have that, and now we have to combine those those two. Um, so for that, I'm going to make. Okay, so the first one was this, right, over there. So let me just take that, and let me just call the final d value. So d equals this, and this. And I'm just going to have to see how that plays out here. I think we need a min between those two. So we need the minimum value of the maximum value of those, of those two things, I believe. But let's just see here. Uh, D. Okay. So now we have the full, the full star. And we only need one smooth set for that, which is, which is another, another great thing. Um, yeah, and just... Uh, like again, so that you know, like, because now I'm cutting out a, a hard edge on this, but we can also just look at the thing by itself. And now we see something like that, right? So let me just multiply that by something. And that gives you that beautiful shape, 
which if ever you wanted to make, I don't know, like a metal or something like that, uh, that has, you know, that has the, that is embossed, then you could use this for that. Um, okay, but that's our star right here. Okay, so now let's get the star and put that in its own function. So I'm going to go, um, okay, those are my stripes. So from here, basically from here would be my stars. Okay, so let's just cut this, control X, and I go over here, float star, and star takes as an input a UV coordinate, and it takes a size, float size. Okay, put that over there. And then here, I'm just going to return this. Return, smooth step, and then over here, I take the size out here because we're piping it in through here. Um, okay, let's see if that works. So I'm going to say call plus equals star of UV and point one. Let's say, okay, that's complaining about this not existing. Um, I suppose I need to take that and recalculate that over here. I guess I can recalculate it over here and say I want the F width of D. Right? It's like how much the value D changes from one pixel to the next. And that gives me that. All right, so that works. Uh, all right, so now the next thing is uh, we need to put those stars in the top left corner. So let me just get rid of this here. Okay. And uh, now we need to go on, on the top left corner over here, right? And now my UV coordinates over here went from 0, 0 to 1, 1. Uh, I would want to have some local UV coordinates that are 0, 0 over here and 1, 1 over there, so that inside of this like star box, I have kind of uh, uh, normalized UV coordinates. Uh, and for that, I'm going to make a little helper function uh, that I call remap. Remap and remap takes as an input a, a point p, and then it takes um, uh, the the bottom left corner and the top right corner. So for that, I want to say bottom and left and top and right, and then I'm got this function is going to take as an input a a coordinate that is in the in the global UV space, and as an output, is going to give me a coordinate that in the in the local UV space, right? So, so if I want the box to go from here to here, then over here, when I put this point into it, which in the in the in the global UV space is zero comma zero point four, let's say, well, the local UV space that should be zero zero, and the local UV space that should be one one. Uh, and to do that, uh, what I can do is, well. Let, let's just look at the x coordinate by itself. So basically, if the x coordinate is the left is at the left edge, then the, then it should return zero, right? Well, the way to do that is just subtract. You can just subtract the left edge from it, right? Because if, if if this is the left edge, then you get the left edge minus the left edge, something minus itself, zero. So that's good. Uh, and then how do we get it that the right edge returns one? Uh, well, we could just do this, uh, right minus left, because now, watch what happens if I'm at the right edge. Well, then this turns into R, and then you get RL minus R, RL divided by itself, which is 1. Okay, so that's how that works. Uh, so, and then I need to do it for the X and for the Y. Right, so this is the X, oh. and that is the Y, and then for the Y, it is uh, P dot y minus the bottom divided by the top minus the bottom. Okay, so that just is a very handy function to remap values. Uh, and so now we could um, uh, we could get this in here. Uh, so let's make another UV coordinate. So a second, this is a second type of UV coordinate. Uh, and I call it ST. So ST is very often used for a second UV coordinate. I could also call it UV2, but I, I like this and a lot of other people use this, so it's good to get used to that. Uh, so let's see how big this box is. So let me just go back over here and check. So let's, let's no, go away. 
Um, all right, so, um, well, obviously, from left to right, it starts at zero. So the left edge is at zero. The right edge is at 0 0.4, right? This is at 40%. Um, so, and the bottom here is at 0.54. So, uh, but, but in Photoshop, my, you, you, uh, my coordinates start at the top and our coordinates start at the bottom. So instead of 54%, we have 100% minus 54%, which is 46%. Okay, so um, so I can remap this like this. Okay, so this is the bottom. The bottom goes first. Oh no, actually the UV corner goes first, and then we have the bottom. And the bottom is at 0.46, and then we have the left, which is at zero, and then we have the top, which is at one, and then we have the right, which is at uh, 0.4. Okay, so and that should remap remap things properly. So we can test that real quick uh, by drawing a little dot. So what I could do here is I could say uh, call plus equals, um, actually now let's do call equals mix of call and uh, let's make a green dot. So zero comma one comma zero. Um, and then I can take the length of ST uh, minus the position that I want it to be at. So if I want it to be in the lower left corner of the box, it would be zero, zero. And then, okay, so it gets a bit long, but I need a smooth step of this. So the smooth step of that to, to cut out a little box. Uh, and then I can say, uh, let's say 0.1 and 0 0.05, let's say. Let's see if that works. Okay, so there is my dot, right? So zero zero is at the at the lower left corner of the box, and then I can check where one zero resides. One zero is over there, and one one is over there. So I can see that that worked. Um, all right. So what I could do now is I could say if st dot x is larger than zero and st.x is smaller than 1, and st.y is larger than 0, and st.y is smaller than 1. Well, now I'm inside, now that pixel that I'm evaluating is, is inside of the star part, right? So, now I don't really need all of this anymore. So now inside of here, I could say, for instance, call equals blue. Right, and then I have to define blue. So let me just, oh, well, anyways, I can type it. Uh, so what is blue? Blue is 60, 59, 110. So vec3 blue equals vec3, 60, 59, 110 divided by 255. And that needs to be a decimal dot. The reason why I need a decimal dot over here and I don't need a decimal dot over here is because uh, the constructor for a vector can take integers. Uh, whereas, uh, like over here, if I divide this by an integer, then you divide a, a, a bunch of vector, uh, a bunch of floats by an integer and it's going to give you an error. So this is just to indicate that, you're, that you want to use a float instead of an integer. All right, I talk so much and so fast. I'm going to drink some tea. All right, um, okay, blue, let's see if that works. Okay, so that makes a blue square over there, that's great. And so now we want a bunch of stars in there. And in order to get a bunch of stars, I first need to a bunch of repeated UVs over here, because my UV only goes from zero to one over here. And if I look over here, I have a bunch of stars, right? And uh, by the way, the way that I look at this here is that I see two grids of stars. I see the, the outer one, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 6 by 5, and then inside of that is a, a smaller one that is 5 by 4. Uh, so let's first do the big one. So right now my UVs go from 0, 0 to 1, 1. But if I want each 
of these stars, and let's just look at only one of these grids, if I want each of these stars in, in their own little UE space, then I, I needed to go really from 0 to, to 6, right? From 0 to 6 and from 0 to 5. <clears throat> um, so let's do that. So what I could do over here is I could say um, vect2gv for grid uv. And that's something I've used in other videos. Uh, that's just how I call it. Uh, when I, whenever I make a grid, I use gv. Um, and so what I could do is I could say st times vec2 of 6 and 5. So now, so now because st goes from 0, 0 to 1, 1, now GV is going to go from 0, 0 to 6, 5. Uh, but I want repeated boxes, so I can take the fractional component of that. Okay, and we can visualize that real quick. Because I could call dot RG plus equals GV. And that gives me a bunch of boxes. And then uh, because our star function draws a star at the origin, uh, we need to make sure the origins are in the middle over here. Well, that is just minus 0.5 over here. Uh, to make to put the origin in the middle of each box, uh, and now uh, we can use that to draw a star. So we could say call uh, equals the mix of call. Actually, so I can do that in one go. I could just say the mix of blue. So then I can get rid of this here. So it's the mix of blue and white because the stars are white uh, with this star shape, right? And the star shape, uh, say GV and 0.1, let's say. And then we can get rid of this. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so there we have a bunch of stars. Um, looks like something wasn't sewn correctly on this flag. Uh, so that happens sometimes. Uh, that's an artifact of F width. Right, it's too long to go into right now. Um, but to fix it, you could just say, you can cap this value so it cannot get too large. So 0 0.05, let's say, over there, and that should get rid of them. All right, so that's great. Um, so that is our first grid of stars. And now the second grid of stars is, so the first grid has six and five. And the second grid needs to have five and four, and it needs to be a little bit smaller. Uh, so what I can do here is I can just copy this Put that over there, and then uh, I can take my I can remap the existing st, uh, and now in order to get those stars exactly the same size, I need to see. Um, so normally, it's like the bottom left here would be at zero zero, on the top right at one one, uh, but this box needs to be a little bit smaller because it has less stars in it, and uh, for that I always have a handy calculator on my desk. I mean, you don't need it, but it's a lot faster if you have that on your desk and you can play with it. Um, so the, the new box for the, for the smaller grid of stars needs to be from left to right. Originally there were six stars and now there's only five stars. So we have to do five divided by six, which is 0 0.833. Uh, and so uh, this is the bottom, this is the left, this is the top, this is the right. So this needs to be 833. And then from top to bottom, uh, there used to be five stars, and now there's four stars. So that's four divided by five, which is 0 0.8. So uh, if the bottom is at zero, um, then the top needs to be at 0 0.8. Um, and that is our remap value. And then we can do the same thing. We can check if we're inside of the new box. Just copy that. And then inside of here, we can do this thing again. Control C. Inside of there, Control V. Okay, and then here we're, we're uh, working with five stars and four stars. Uh, and then over here, we have to just be careful that we don't have blue and white, because if we do that, then it will change the, it will change or it will overwrite the first stars. Uh, and then over here, we just have to say call and white. Um, and then it looks like nothing has changed, and that is because our stars are exactly the same size as the other stars, and they haven't been shifted. So like I, I made the box smaller here, 
but the, the, the bottom left is pinned to the bottom left of this, and the bottom left needs to be moved over by half a star. And so to do that, basically this box needs to be centered here. Um, so this is the bottom, this is the top. So I'm going to just add 0.1 to, to both these, these sides here. So plus 0.1, right? So that puts, puts it over there. And then over here, I have to add half of, half of the remaining distance here, which is 0 0.088. So 0 0.0833 and plus 0 0.0833. And that moves that over there. Um, so let's just clean this up a little bit because we don't obviously need to do it like this. And this could be 0 0.9. And this could be uh, 9166. 9166. And that's the same thing. Uh, all right, so that is that. Um, I suppose we should make this size its own variable so that we can play around with it. So float size equals 0.1, that would be the same thing. You can make tiny stars like that. Um, or like this. And so now we kind of have to play around with the size of the stars, I guess. I guess that's okay. Uh, all right, so let's put this in its own function. So I do like control X, all of this. And then over here, I'm going to say Vec3 flag, and that takes as an input a UV coordinate, and as an output, it's going to give me a color. Okay, go there, and uh, return call. <clears throat> All right. Here I'm going to say vec3 call equals flag of uv. And that didn't change anything, so that shows me that that is correct. And now let's try to animate this thing. Uh, and so to make it wavy, well, first, like we can take this uv coordinate and remap it. Like if, if I if I like add, for instance, uh, something to the y coordinate. And it just moves the flag up and down. And actually, that shows me another issue, which is that right now the stripes and everything go outside of the zero one range, um, both left and right, and top and top to bottom. Uh, I'm going to fix it for top to bottom so that we don't have this. And so what I can do for that is I can go over here. So I could say call. I could, I could multiply that by a smooth step. That takes the UV as an input, and it goes, let's say, from 0 to 0 0.01. Uh, okay, well, that's the bottom. But if I, if I subtract that over there, then I get that. So I could just turn them around, right? Not like that, but like that. And then obviously this needs to be very, very small. And then for the bottom, I would have to do the same thing, right? Because if I if I move this up, and the bottom it keeps keeps going with the with the stripe, so then I would have to do the same thing over here, uh, but with these things turned around, and not the minus one over there. Okay, so that's two smooth steps, but it's nicer to do it with one smooth step. So let's let's do that. So take this out. I take my UV, my UV dot Y, which goes from 0, 0 to 1, 1, right? And if I, if I take the absolute value of that, actually, no, if I first, so normally the UV would go from 0, 0 to, or from 0 to 1. If I subtract 0 0.5 from it, it goes from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. If I take the absolute of that, then it's basically folding the negative part onto the positive part. So now it goes from 0 to 0 0.5. And if I subtract 0 0.5 from that, now I shift that entire thing down so that the edges, both the top edge and the bottom edge of the flag, are resting at 0 now. And now I can do this entire thing with one, with one smooth step. So now if you see over here, if I move this over there, it's the same thing. And now this is my magic number that obviously uh, we said we don't want. We want to have this F width. So I could say plus W. 
and then I still have one pixel over here that I don't want so I can just add that W over here as well to move that pixel line out. Uh, so now I have black on the top and on the bottom and so now I could use a sine wave for instance to move this thing up and down so if I just put a sine wave of I time let's say then I just have the entire the entire flag moving up and down it's moving way too much also so let's make that smaller so now that moves up and down but obviously I want every column of this flag to be at a different phase of the sign and so for that I can just add uv.x to this um, and then I want to move that a little bit more or have that more pronounced and that looks really bad very pixely I need to make my uh, I need to make my um, my uh, transition larger to have that not be so pixely um, so I suppose Yeah, okay, well, I think I could just multiply this by a larger number. It's going to fix that now. Okay, apparently not. Okay, what am I looking at here? Let's try it. Hmm, okay. Well, times that. I'm a little bit confused by why this would be so pixely right now. Uh, over here and for now I'm just gonna equals take this F width over here and I'm going to take this entire thing um, let's cut this out control X and call this Y and then I here, call that Y, and then call this Y, and then put semicolon over there. Okay, so that's better. Um, yeah. Okay, so now we only have like the only thing where we have like some pixeliness is at the bottom of the um, at the bottom of the blue part over here, which we should change. Um, and that is because we have an if statement here so there's a hard edge between blue and not blue and um, I'm just going to yeah in order to do that I'm going to change this over here so let me just put some space between all of these so this is the same right so you can just write it like this and it looks the same because here we need to say not just blue, we need to mix the blue. So we need to say like a mix of blue and, or a mix of the original color, which is this striped background and blue, and some smooth step. Uh, that is dependent on the st.y. And then over here, again, it's like a zero and a very small number. So, well, like that, I could do it. You see, like now it makes a big thing over here, but then obviously we want it to be very, very small. Um, so I hope we can use this for that. Uh, it's still a bit pixely, so let's multiply it by two. It's already less pixely, multiply it by three. Okay, and that's nice and smooth. Uh, all right, so that is that. Uh, now this is going the wrong direction. I, I wanted to 
go the other way. So I can just put this I time and subtract it over here, minus I time. And then I want it to be a bit more wavy, like that. And I want it to go twice as fast, like that. Okay, that's kind of fine. And now these waves, like they, they're, they're exactly straight from top to bottom. I want them to be slanted like that. So for that, I could just add dv.y inside of the phase here. That makes it like that. And if you want it more pronounced, you could multiply that by some number so that you have, you get something like that. Maybe this is too much, I don't know. Yeah, something like that, maybe more here. Yeah, something like that, I think would be good. Over there. All right, and now we want to add some shading to this. And in order to add shading to this, I'm just going to, well, I could use the same value over here, uh, but then that would just make it that where, where, wherever, wherever you're at the top of the wave, it's, it's light, and wherever you're at the bottom of the wave, it's dark. Like I want to, I want to be wherever the the flag is going down, it's dark, and wherever it's going up, it's light, so that the light is kind of coming from the side. And so for that, I just have to take the derivative of this of this thing. And um, let me just take this out here. Control X, I call it T. And over here, I say float T equals this, so that doesn't change anything. But then over here, when I get my flag, after I get my flag, I can say call times equals one. If I do it times one, obviously nothing happens, but plus the derivative of this. And the derivative of a sine is just a cosine, and so it's the cosine of t. Um, and that's going to be way too much. Okay, so then we're going to have to attenuate that a little bit, like 0.3, let's say. Uh, and now I think it's get, getting a little bit too bright, so we could just make this a bit smaller. Yeah, something like that. That's still a bit too bright, actually. Well, so yeah, if we if we want this to be capped at one, uh, then because my cosine can go from plus 0.3 to minus 0.3 right now, so if I want it to be capped at one, and then I'd have to put it times 0.7, and I think that's pretty good. Uh, so uh, again, to all you Americans out there, I wish you a happy Fourth of July, and. Um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun to make to make a flag like this. Uh, I'm sure I could make other flags as well. So if you want your flag made, um, then post it in the comments below, and I'll see if I can do it, or maybe do it yourself. So like, why not? Here's a challenge for you guys. Why not make a bunch of shader toys with the flag of your country? And uh, you might get lucky if you're from the Netherlands, like I'm, like I am. Then it might be pretty easy to do. If you're from Mexico or Kenya, then it's probably pretty hard to do. But I challenge you to try this and, um, and uh, yeah, post it in the comments below. And if you have trouble, then maybe I could, maybe I could make a future video about it. Uh, but for now, I will leave you with this flag. So have a good day, and I will see you next time.